So it looks like a wall of text, but if we step through this together slowly, uh, it's not confusing stuff. We know all of this language, so let's have a look. Question four in 2D, uh, let's just start from the top of the question. It says, find the y-coordinate of the point A on this curve. Here it is, I've written it down, and you might like to do the same. Where x equals a half. Okay, so let's just make sure we get our heads straight. This curve here, right, it's going to be an exponential curve, right? And every x value has a y value along with it. It's, it's a function, not a relation. We want the particular y value when x equals, I think it says a half, right? So here's exactly how I'd like you to set it out. Write your original function equation there so that we can refer to it easily rather than like look at the, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only person who's like started a question and then looked at the wrong line for an equation and then like, wait, why are my answers all wrong? Because you look at the wrong actual function. So write this down so you've got it right there above your, your eye line. And then say when x equals a half, okay? Now what I'm searching for, is a y value. So I'm going to substitute this back into the original function. Yeah, does that make sense? So let's go ahead and do that. When x equals a half, y equals, and I'm just going to do a straight substitution, no changes or anything like that, e to the power of 2 multiplied by a half minus 1. Now we know what 2 multiplied by a half is, but I'm doing this step really explicitly so I don't screw up my substitution, and so that if I do, it's really easy to see where I went wrong. Okay? Alright, let's, let's have a go. So I've now got e to the power of, what's going to happen up here? Cancel. Uh, 2 times a half is 1. 1 take away 1 is? 0. So that's that. Now I happen to know, and I hope you do as well, what e to the power of 0 is, but I think it's probably a bridge too far to skip right to that straight away. I want this line in here as a sort of scaffold for my thinking, and then I evaluate. It's equal to? 1. one. Fantastic. At this point, have I got my answer? More or less, but I would probably like to write it down a little neater than that. They've talked in the question about some point A. The point A has this x value, and this y value. So I'm going to say, therefore, a, and I'm going to write it the way that I would write a point. There's the first question. Okay, part b moves on, and this is where the calculus starts to kick in. It says, find the derivative of that function, and then show that the gradient of the tangent at a is this. Okay, so that's, that's a lot to take in. Let's just do one step at a time. They want us to find the derivative. So part b, uh, We've got y written up there, so I'm going to write dy on dx. Um, quick note, by the way, you remember how I was telling you about all that sort of wrong notation before? Um, don't talk about dy on dx unless your question has a y, right? Um, if it's got f of x, then use that notation. If they haven't labeled it, if they're just giving you some function like this and you want to talk about its derivative, then give it a name and then you can start to talk about it. Say it again. X still equal to half. Ah, we'll come to that. That's a really good question. It's first said, find the derivative of that. So we want to know about it without regard to any x values. We want it for all x values. So let's just, we've been doing this for the last you know, hour or so. Let's get the derivative. Here's the original function. What's the inside function? 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1. So its derivative is? 2. two. That's just the inside part. And then I move on to the rest of it. So the outside function is e to the power of some stuff. What happens when we differentiate e to the power of some stuff? Yeah, nothing happens to it. It's e to the power of that stuff. There we go. There's my derivative. And now, Swank's question, it says, show that the gradient of the tangent at a is 2. So, in other words, this will give me the gradient if I substitute in an appropriate x value. And the x value that I want in this case is a half, what I got from the previous part. So, again, I'm going to set that out, right? I'm going to say when x equals a half, Right? I'm now going to evaluate my gradient. It will give me a, sorry, I'm going to evaluate my derivative, which will give me a gradient. Yes, it should, I hope. dy on dx. Let's go ahead and again do that substitution step. So I've got 2e to the 2 a half minus 1. That feels familiar, doesn't it? It's the same function I was dealing with earlier. So just like before, I'm going to get 2e to the naught, which is 2, and that's what I was supposed to get. So I generally... When they give me some kind of result, they're like, hey, prove this thing, right? I generally end by saying, yeah, that's the thing that you required me to find. Two, as you requested, okay? There's part B. Have we answered the question? Are you happy with that? Um, I will just put one additional thing on which may or may not be helpful, but I think it, it's sort of helpful in terms of the question. It's show that the gradient of the tangent at A, that's 
G, that's a long phrase, right? We have a usual letter that we use to indicate gradient. Which letter do we usually use? M, M right? So I'm going to say M. This is a gradient, a specific place. At A. So I'm going to say M, and I usually use a little subscript, little A down the bottom there. So this is a way of saying the gradient at that point A is 2, because that's how I calculate it. All right. Part C, here's where we're going to tie this up in a bow. So this is what's called an application of differentiation. We differentiate it, and we can apply that knowledge to find, you can see in part C, the equation of a tangent. So a tangent is a straight line that just touches, right? It just touches this graph, which I'm just going to eyeball for you now. It's going to look something like this, a half comma 1, right? So what I'm trying to find is, the equation of the tangent at that spot, which I guess will look something like that, right? That's what the line I'm trying to find what its equation is, okay? Now, I already know a point that goes through it, and I've also just in part b found out the gradient at that point. So how do I combine that to get the equation of the line? Point gradient form. Point gradient form, thank you very much. Can we recite together what point gradient form of a straight line is? I'll give you a clue, it starts with a y. Y minus y1. Very good. M. M. Uh, x minus x1. X minus x1. Fantastic. So there's point gradient form. If you want to um, maybe put for yourself a little reminder, because this is something we're calling on from our coordinate geometry knowledge. This is point gradient form of a straight line. And all I need to do is take all the information I developed in the earlier parts of the question and appropriately substitute them in. Okay? So, y minus, what is y1? One. It's 1. That's what I got from part A. Two. Okay, the M is now what I got in the previous part, part B, so I'll put in 2. X minus half. Okay, there we go. I've done all the substitution. Just have a quick look at the question. It says, hence find the equation of the tangent A. It didn't say in any particular form, but I, surely I can simplify this, right? What might be the first thing you do? Um, expand the... Yep, this guy we can simplify by expanding, so I'll write 2x... Minus 1, thank you. Um, can we collect all our constant terms together? Where would you like to put them? Um, in a little basket will do, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to put them in this basket, which adds them together. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Do you agree with that? You're going to get y equals... 2, minus 2. So 2x minus 2. Just careful. I'm adding 1 to both sides, right? Plus 1 cancels. Plus 1 also cancels. So here's my little basket, okay? Now, having a look at this, does this match roughly what I expected? I mean, I eyeballed this, so you can see I don't quite go through the origin, um, but it matches, like, I'm, I'm increasing, it's going to go roughly through that point, so I think I'm okay, I'm in the ballpark, right? Am I done with the question yet? Yes. Read it carefully. Okay, I've got to show that it passes through... It's actually not a zero. Is it an o? It's an O, which means... What does the O mean in quantum geometry? That's the origin, thank you. So it's zero, zero. How do you take a line and prove that it goes through somewhere? What would you do? Hmm. Graph it. Um, you could graph it. You certainly could graph it. That would take a really long time, though. Like, it seems like an excessive way to go about this. I could, Sean, what are you thinking? In this case, it's zero to zero. We take both points, sub them in, and if y is equal to the point we chose, yep. we should that means that yes, it does pop up. Yeah, fantastic. So let me just make sure I rehearse that, Ishan. Tell me if I got it right. Um, we know where the origin is. It's 0, 0. x equals 0 and y equals 0. So I should be able to take both of those, pop them in here, and it should satisfy this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. When x equals 0, I'm going to do the substitution into this straight line. y is going to be 2 times 0. Um, I know that it's comically like trivial to say, like I know what 2 times 0 is, right? The reason why I'm including this line and then saying 0 is, the question says, hey, prove it. Prove that that should be y equals 0. And so if I just said x equals 0, y equals 0, you're not really kind of proving anything, you're just stating what the question says, right? So even though this seems like a really simple thing to put, I think it's helpful because it shows where I've put it into. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. 0, 0, uh, 0, 0 satisfies, this is probably my final line, y equals 2x. So it passes through the origin. So could, put in the point that zero, zero, could I put what through the point gradient formula? 
Oh, okay, so I could put 0, 0 into here. I'd also need the gradient as well, which is 2. I think you could, but it'd be a very roundabout way of doing it. I think this is probably the most straightforward. It's like a whole 1, 2, 3 lines, 2 and a half lines, really. Okay? Does anyone have any questions?